Now we will solve one numerical on the basis of selection of B belt drive or particularly we will be addressing a problem about how many belt drives are to be used for the given conditions. So the problem statement tells us that the designer wants to determine for these given conditions. These are the given conditions. So for these designer wants to determine how many V belts should be used. It means that designer has some doubt in his mind that maybe one belt may not be sufficient for this particular set of design parameters. So we will sort out that how many belts will be required to transmit the given power for these specified conditions. So first of all, we will write down the given things because they help us to sort the data. Given things do not carry the mark during the solution, but they help you to sort the to organize the data which has been provided to you so that accordingly you can utilize it in the complete solution. So the given thing, the first given thing is diameter of the driving pulley. So the D has been given to you. So that is 200 mm. Then diameter of the driven pulley. So diameter of the larger pulley. So that is 600 mm. Then groove angle for sheets. So that is theta in case of V belt drive because this problem is related with the V belt drive. So theta is equal to 34 degree. Then the next thing which is given is the mass of the belt. But remember, this is mass of the belt kg per meter length of belt. So this is 0 0.5 kg per meter. Maximum permissible, permissible tension in the belt is 500. So we can say that the tension which is allowed, allowable tension is equal to 500 Newton. Remember, this is not exactly P1 because right now designer does not know that uh, whether uh, this number of belt is sufficient or not. So that is why we are not able to use this equation of KW rating, which is P1 minus P2 into, sorry, P1 minus P2 into V upon 1000. This expression we cannot simply make use of because we do not know how many belts are to be used. And that is why we cannot write this given entity as the, uh, we cannot use this exp expression. That's why we cannot write this given entity as P1 equal to 500 Newton. We will need to sort that out. Then the next thing which is given is the coefficient of friction. So F is equal to 0 0.2 contact angle for the smaller pulley so alpha s it is equal to 157 degree speed of the smaller pulley so that is equal to n and it is 1440 rpm the next thing the power to be transmitted kw which is to be transmitted it is equal to 10 kilowatt so our given things are sorted on our side so now we will start with the solution procedure. So the first thing that we need to calculate is the magnitude of P1 and P2 that is our core focus. So in here we have two expressions available between P1 and P2. This expression is useful if we do not this expression is useful if we do not replace the value of P1 by 500 Newton. Otherwise, this numerical can be solved immediately, but it will not be the correct answer. And that is why we should uh, prevent ourselves from tempting to use this equation by replacing P1 equal to 500 Newton. So there are two equations available to us. The first equation which is available, uh, it gives you the relation between P1 and P2 like this. So P1 minus mv square upon P2 minus mv square is equal to e raise to f alpha divided by sine of theta by 2. So in this expression, m is the mass per unit length which is provided. V is the velocity of the belt. P1 and P2 are the tensions on tight and slack side. F is the coefficient of friction. Alpha is the alpha s which is already available. Theta, the group angle for sheaves already available to us. Now, firstly, we need to calculate the velocity in this. So velocity V, it is equal to pi dn by 60 into 10 raise to 3. We need to divide by 10 raise to 3 as well. 
because the diameter which has been specified it is in mm so that is why we need to divide by 10 raised to 3 as well so pi into diameter is 200 n is 1440 rpm divided by 60 into 10 raised to 3 so the next thing that we need to do you can calculate this using your calculator you should calculate it that is what i will suggest parallelly so the velocity that we arrive at it is 15.08 meter per second somewhere in the range your answer should come so now we have velocity so immediately we can calculate one by one term in this equation this particularly this uh, equation is a complicated one so mv square first we will calculate then we will calculate this term f alpha sine of theta by 2 we will break down this equation into smaller terms so immediately what we come to know that now mv square it is equal to m is known to us it is 0 0.5 multiplied by v is 15.08 so bracket squared or that entire velocity squared so the term mv square because it will be required in numerator as well as denominator of that equation so uh, mv square comes out to be 113.70 this value is not is now available to us fantastic now we can go for the next entity that is necessary to solve this equation f alpha divided by sine of theta by 2 so first and then we will take its exponential so f alpha divided by sine of theta by 2 so f is known to us it is 0 0.2 remember in this equation the alpha has to be in radian so whatever the value of alpha s which is provided to us which is 157 multiply it by pi by 180 because it is 157 degree to convert it into radian we have to multiply by pi by 180 so uh, then sine of theta by 2 so sine of theta which is available to us it is 34 so 34 divided by 2 so ultimately this entity comes out to be 1.874 please verify the answer using your calculator thereafter the next thing we need to take exponential of this so e raised to this entire entity so it implies that e raised to 1.874 it will be equal to 6.52 so now this right hand side of this equation right hand side of this equation is now also available to us so we have figured out mv square on numerator as well as a denominator and on the right hand side we have this value of exponential of f alpha upon sine of theta by 2 we will substitute all of these values and then we will try to obtain the relationship between p1 and p2 so that gives you p1 minus mv square which is 113.70 divided by p2 minus mv square so that is p2 minus 113.70 so it is equal to exponential of the entire term so that is equal to 6.52 now we can simply uh, take this entire denominator on the other side so by adjustment what we get is p1 minus 6.52 p2 plus 627.61 equal to 0 we can call this as expression number 1 because the simple understanding of mathematics is that if you want to obtain a unique solution then you need number of equations equal to number of unknowns so here we have two unknowns p1 and p2 so we will need two equations which will give us the relationship between p1 and p2 and that is why we have obtained the first expression now we will go for the second expression for that we have one understanding that whatever is the power to be transmitted it is equal to p1 minus p2 into v divided by 1000 we can substitute the values so kw which is to be transmitted is 10 kilobyte from the key one things 
P1 is not known to us, P2 is not known to us, like I explained in the logical explanation earlier, divided by 1000. So, I'm sorry, the velocity is known to us. I will just put in the velocity, which is 15.08. So, this is known to us. So, when we solve this equation, we get one more relationship between P1 and P2. And that relationship is that P1 minus P2, it is equal to 663.13. So, ultimately, when we simplify this, and we can simply use this to substitute in this expression number 1. So, P1 minus P2 is this much. So, it implies that P1 is equal to 6. 63.13 plus p2 when you have taken this p2 on the other side of the equation you can call this as expression number two and this term it can be substituted in the equation number one so when you solve equation one and equation two so solve equation one and equation two or in simple language when you substitute the value of p1 in terms of p2 so now by the beauty of mathematics we have relationship between p1 and p2 and there are two relationships so it is possible to obtain unique solution of this system of equations so when you solve this what you get is the value of p2 will be equal to 223.83 newton and correspondingly the value of P1 will be equal to 896.96 and like I said earlier you should calculate this in your calculator so that you don't miss on the answer it is mathematical problem so you can learn it only by solving it by yourself so we have the value of P1 and P2 now what we observe here this observation is particularly important in this case, the value of P1 is 896 or approximately 897 Newton. On the other hand, the tension which is allowed in the belt, which is given in the problem statement, it is only 500 Newton. The statement is maximum permissible tension in the belt is 500 Newton. And what we see here, this is less than the value of P1 that we have calculated when we have assumed that there is only one belt which is used for the power transmission so it is clear from the analysis that if we use only one belt in the power transmission process for this entire given range or given set of data then that belt will be having 897 newton of tension on the tight side so ultimately the requirement which is given by the designer requirement of 500 Newton this is greater than 500 Newton it is not getting satisfied which means we cannot rely on only one belt we need more than one belt so we need to calculate the number of belts required on the basis of this so it implies that number of belts required it will be equal to the maximum permissible tension maximum permissible tension or the tension which is allowed divided by the actual tension uh, my mistake this is the maximum permissible tension or maximum tension which is actually coming into the picture in case of a single belt so this is maximum tension divided by the permissible tension So the tension which is coming right now or maximum tension which is in the actual case. So this is 896.96 divided by which is allowed for the given belt which is 500. So the value comes down to be 1.79. So in order to transmit the power of 10 kilowatt for these conditions you need 1.79 number of belts or simply you need two belts. So remember when you are solving the problem 
the logic which is there while designing it has to be understood you cannot directly go for the formula that yes sir we know kw we know p1 because it is given in the problem statement we can substitute that and immediately we have the velocity from pi dn by 60 immediately we can calculate p2 no it doesn't happen like that so once again we proceed uh, through this entire philosophy of using uh, simple understanding is that we need two equations to solve two unknowns p1 and p2 and once it is done we can calculate the number of belts required so finally it comes down to be two belts thank you